Welcome back to the Simpkins Welcome back to the Simpkins Physics Corner. Today it's problem solving circle time, but we're going to do it a little bit virtually here. So here's the first thing I want you guys to do. Go ahead and grab your notes. If you swing over to the canvas, you can download these guys right in week eight, live one, right here, problem solving circle time. So download that first, then go ahead and get this information. We've already discussed things like X and V. The only thing new for this unit is A. So we already know that X means position. It's measured in meters. XF would be final position, XI would be initial position. Then we got things like velocity, VF and VI would be final velocity and initial velocity in meters per second. Acceleration would be in meters per second squared. And then of course your time would be in seconds. Not too crazy there. Um, but, so I want you guys to do the first thing is to go ahead and just write those down in your notes. Time is in seconds is at the bottom, but my frame is chopping it off. All right, let's go then to look at some word problems. Before we do that, I want to share some infinite wisdom with you. Sometimes what you don't know tells you more than what you do know. Sometimes what you don't know tells you more than what you do know. Let me show you how this great wisdom can inform us to be successful in physics problem solving. So if you look at your equation sheet, you see those four equations right there. And if you write a good list of knowns for all of your problems, then really the equations will reveal themselves. If you remember that sometimes what you don't know tells you more than what you do know. Let me show you how this plays out. So if a car moves forward up a hill at 12 meters per second with backwards acceleration of 1.6 meters per second squared, what is its displacement after 6 seconds? We make our list of knowns to begin, so 12 meters per second is our moving forward, and that's the velocity at the beginning of the problem. How did I know that? Well, you can go back to that table you just made. Oh, velocity is in meters per second. 12 meters per second is also meters per second, so that's got to be velocity somehow with a uniform backward acceleration of. Now, backwards indicates direction, and if it's going the opposite direction, I need to indicate that mathematically with a negative sign. So our acceleration is negative 1.6 meters per second squared. It says six seconds go by, and just a little pro tip here. If a problem doesn't specifically tell you where you started, you can always make the initial position zero meters. Now, don't overgeneralize this. You can't always make the final, in fact, you're never gonna make the final position zero. But you can always make xi equal to zero if it doesn't tell you where you started. Now, let's go back to our mantra. If we want to find displacement, all right, displacement you'll recall is delta x, but that's really xf minus xi. And of course, if xi is zero, then the final position and displacement are pretty much the same thing, right? So we want to find xf. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's go back to the mantra. Sometimes what you don't know tells you more than what you do know. What does that mean? Well, look at our list of knowns and things that we do know. What don't we know? Sometimes the things we don't know tells more than what we do know. We don't know VF. Notice that there is no final velocity in any of our list of knowns because it didn't tell us that. So right away, that means that this equation, oops, this is going to help us pick our equation because this equation has a VF. We can't use it because we don't know VF. This equation has a VF. We can't use it because we don't have no VF. And this equation has a VF, so we can't use it because it has a VF. So do you see how what we didn't know, VF, just told us a lot about what we should know is that we can't use any of those three equations because we don't know that final velocity. Additionally, we do have to have an equation with the thing we actually want to solve for in it. All right. So here it would look like this. XF equals 1 half AT squared plus VIT plus XI. And we can go ahead and plug all our stuff in here. So 1 half negative 1.6 meters per second squared times 6 seconds squared plus... Uh, 12 meters per second times 6 seconds. And then we can make xi equal to 0. Oops, sorry about that. We can make xi equal to 0 if it doesn't tell us exactly the starting position that it wants us to use. So let me come back to my red pen here, and we'll say plus 0. There it is. So that's how we use what we don't know, vf, to pick what we should know or do know, which is which equation to use. So I'm going to hit pause here and calculate this for you. And what I want you guys to do is go ahead and hit pause right now and try to calculate the final answer, and then unpause when you get it. And if you do that, you're going to get, oops, sorry, if you do it correctly in your calculator, you're going to get 43.2 meters. That's going to be your displacement after six seconds. Now, for the sake of just providing examples in this video, I'm not going to do part B. It would be a similar process. You just plug in nine seconds everywhere instead of six seconds. Let's go to the next one. Determine the displacement of a plane that experiences uniform acceleration from 66 meters per second north to 88 meters per second north in 12 seconds. So let's start to build out our list of knowns here. 12 seconds, of course, is going to be our time, but we have 66 meters per second, 
and we have 88 meters per second. Now, some people get confused with this one because the word acceleration appears right here. But remember, this is why the units are so important. A lot of people say, well, 66, that's got to be acceleration, right? Wrong. Acceleration is in meters per second squared. If it says you go from a speed of, right, that's, that's what we're implying with meters per second. We go from 66 meters per second to 88 meters per second. So your list of knowns would actually look a little something like this. And then it's asking us to solve for the displacement of the plane. Now, you might notice that we um, didn't, it didn't specify where we need to start the problem, so we can start it at zero. If it doesn't tell you xi, then you can make xi zero. But let's take a look at what we don't know. We don't know the acceleration. So sometimes what you don't know tells you more than what you do know. We don't know acceleration. Can't use that one. Don't know acceleration. Can't use that one. Don't know acceleration. Can't use that one. Guess what? What we don't know, the acceleration, just pick the equation that we need to use. Delta x equals 1 half vi plus vf times t. Let's go ahead and see if this works for us. So that would be equal to 1 half. The vi is going to be 66. I'm going to practice bad physics and not write units just for the sake of doing this hastily so you can see as many examples as possible. But we have 66 plus 88 times a half. That would get us 77 right here. And 77 times 12 would get us our final answer. So 77 times 12 is going to be 924 meters. So that would be our final answer for the change in x, or x final, whatever you want to call it. Again, make a list of knowns, ask yourself, what do I not know, and then pick the equation that excludes that variable. So in here we didn't know a, so all the, all the equations with a were immediately ruled out. We knew which equation to pick. Sometimes what you don't know tells you more than what you do know. This airplane starts from rest and accelerates at this rate east for 30 seconds. What is its displacement? Okay, so from rest tells us that vi is 0 meters per second. Acceleration is 3 meters per second squared. The time t is 30 seconds. And it says what was the plane's displacement. So we can take a look at this one. Now, it didn't tell us where we started, so I can make xi equal to 0, because that's one of our rules. But remember, sometimes what you don't know tells you more than what you do know. And what we don't know is vf. So we can't use this one, we can't use this one. And we can't use this one, so we have to be able to use that one. So this looks like x final equals 1 half at squared plus v initial t plus xi. And if we plug these in, 1 half, the acceleration was 3 meters per second squared. The time was 30 seconds. Don't forget to square only the time. Some people like to square that whole term. Make sure you're only squaring the thing that it's actually telling you to square, which is the time. Now, v initial is actually 0, so 0 times 30, of course, that's going to be 0, and so is this one. So this goes to 0, that goes to 0, and our final position here is going to be whatever that is. So let's go ahead and drop that in. 30 squared times 3 times 0.5, that's going to be 1,350 meters. Cool. How about this next one? All right, the race car is slowed with a constant acceleration of 11 meters per second squared opposite the direction of motion. So that's telling me A is negative 11 meters per second squared. If the car go is going uh, 55 meters per second, so initial velocity is 55 meters per second, how many meters will it go travel before it stops? Okay, and then if it stops, that means that V final is zero, doesn't it? Because we're coming to a stop. Now, look at. let's go ahead and take a look at this one. Sometimes what we don't know tells us more than what we do know. What does it not give us? It doesn't give us time. So we can't use this equation because it has time in it. We can't use this equation because it has time in it. And this equation has time in it twice, so we definitely can't use that one. So I guess what we don't know, time, just helped us to pick the equation that we need to use, which is this one. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at how to plug things in here then. The V final is 0 squared equals V initial squared, so that's 55 squared, plus 2 times negative 11. Don't forget to throw that in there. And then XF minus XI, well, that would just be XF, right? Because XI, we can make 0 if we want to. Now, don't be an algebra noob when you do this. We have 0 equals 3,025 minus 22XF. Stop, all right? Some people want to take 3,025 and subtract 22 from it. You can't do that. That's not legal, all right, because these are connected together with multiplication. So the correct algebra steps for doing this, and these are this, this equation is going to be the hardest algebraically usually to get your answer out of, is you have to subtract 3,025 from both sides, and so that would look like negative, sorry, let me rewrite that. That would look like negative 3,025 
equals, see these would cancel out because we subtracted it, equals negative 22x final. Now hopefully you see that the next algebra step would be to divide both sides by negative 22. So our x final here is, oops, sorry, come back. Our x final is 3025 divided by 22. Our final x would be 137.5 meters. Okay, so remember the mantra. As you look at your equation sheet and you see word problems, underline the knowns, write the list of knowns with the variables. You can use that table on page one of our notes today if you need some help with how to figure out which units go with which variables. Then ask yourself the question, does what I don't know tell me more than what I do know? Does the variable that you don't have in your list, does that help you pick the right equation? It usually will. So what I'd like you guys to do now for the rest of this time, whether you're in class today, period 6-7, or you're at home, period 6-7, uh, is what I would like you to do is to try out these next three problems. What you'll notice is that I've modeled one, and then you'll see another problem that different situation, different numbers, but it's going to have the same technique. Same down, same with this one down here. You just kind of cut off on my video here, but number two, right? That one is going to be matching with number 66, and number three is going to be matching with number 67. So I want you guys to try out these three problems and come back to the next time I see you. I'm going to ask you, what are the answers for these? What did you get? A pro tip here, just to be careful, anytime it says west, remember that has a negative connotation. So, so this would be a velocity initial of negative 30 meters per second, right? And then if it says if the drag from the water slows the boat, you think slowing, right, would be negative, but actually if you're moving negative already, then slowing acceleration would be in the positive direction. So I'm just going to give you a tip for number one there because that is a trickier one with that whole west and slowing down thing. All right, so this is Mr. Simpkins in the Simpkins Physics Corner for Physics Academic. Have fun with your acceleration problem solving.